Hello Internet, I am Mihai. It is the first episode of the Jenkins Pipeline tutorial. Let's start. In this video we will install an Ubuntu server. The server is very important. In the next videos we will use the server to install Jenkins and configure Node.js backend application. I will install the Ubuntu server inside the VirtualBox. VirtualBox is not mandatory. You can use cloud providers like AWS or Azure. Also you can use another virtualization tools, for example VMware. Windows and Mac users, attention! Jenkins will be configured to deploy on a Ubuntu server. I will use some tools which doesn't exist on Windows or Mac. I should tell about the prerequisites. Network basic knowledge is required. My VirtualBox network configuration doesn't have to be the same as yours. Cloud Virtual Machines network is configured in a different way than local Virtual Machines network. All of this means that you have to configure the server's network by yourself. So, if you don't know anything about IP addresses and port numbers, stop the video. Complete some courses about network and only then come back. This time I will create a new Git repository. It will store all the configuration used in the entire tutorial. Open GitHub, create a new repository. Repository name is Jenkins Pipeline Tutorial underscore underscore configuration. No description. The repository is public. No readme file. No git ignore template. No license. Create the repository. We will use the instruction later. Now I want to add the repository to the GitHub project. It is optional, you don't have to do it. I do it to keep the repositories grouped together. So let's link it. Open my projects. Go to classic projects. Open the project. And link the new repository. It's done. Let's check it. Go to projects. Go to classic project and now you see two linked repositories. Now I want to open my file explorer and create a new folder. The folder name is configuration. Open Visual Studio Code inside the configuration folder and save it as a workspace. I open as Visual Studio Code. I trust the folder. I go to the file tab and save the workspace as check the path, check the name, everything is correct, save. Restart VS Code. Now I create a new folder. It is Jenkins server. And a new file server installation.md. I will write in this file all steps I did to configure the server. Also, I create the utils file. Here I will write general information. Let's configure git. First thing, create the gitignore file and add the code workspace file to the gitignore file. Dot git ignore. Copy the file name, open gitignore and write splat dot and the file name. Git will ignore everything which ends with code workspace. Now go to the GitHub repository and follow the instruction. Open the repositories, open the new repository, and let's do what is written here. I open VS Code, save git ignore, open file explorer, open the terminal here, open again the browser, and the first command is git init. I write git init. Next command is adding a readme file. I don't want to add it, but I want to add another files I created recently. Let's check them. Git status. I created three files. Let's add them to the stage. Git add, git ignore, enter. Git add utils, enter. Git add Jenkins server, server installation, enter. Check the status again. All the files are added to the stage. Let's check the instruction. It's time to commit. I will just copy the command, past it. Dash M stands for the message. The command is ready, enter. 
all files were committed, let's check the git status. Git status and nothing is here. Now we have to rename the branch, copy the command, paste it, run it, and the branch name is main now. Now we have to connect our local repository with the remote repository. Again, copy the command. And one thing, if you don't know how to use SSH, switch to HTTPS and copy this address. Pass the command. It's wrong. I will copy it again. Copy, past, the command is OK, enter. Now it is time to push. Copy the command, past it, enter. Our changes were pushed to GitHub. Let's check it. Refresh the page, and here we see our files. Git ignore, utils, and server installation. Also, we can check the commit history. We have only one commit in our history, and it is here, first commit. Let's install the Ubuntu server. As I said, I use VirtualBox, but you can use any other tool. It can be even a cloud provider like AWS or Microsoft Azure. VirtualBox will require a Ubuntu server image. Let's download it. Search for Ubuntu server download. Open the first link, accept the cookies, select the manual server installation, click on download Ubuntu server. While it is downloading, I will put the link to the Ubuntu page in the utilsmd file. Go to VS Code, close git ignore, open utils.md and write installation links ubuntu server download go to the browser move back copy the url paste it in utilsmd save it the image was downloaded let's run it go to virtualbox and create a new image new the image name will be the following. Go to File Explorer, open the folder where you downloaded the Ubuntu image, copy the name, paste it in VirtualBox, and write Jenkins server. Check if the path is correct. Check if it is Linux, Ubuntu 64 bits. Go next. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM on my desktop, so I can afford to use 4 gigabytes of RAM. If you have less resources on your computer, choose a lesser value. I don't recommend to use less than 1,500 megabytes of RAM. Select your RAM and go next. Create a virtual hard disk now. Select VDI. Dynamically allocate it. Select at least 20 gigabytes of memory. Create. The server configuration is created. Let's make some changes. Go to settings, go to system, disable floppy, go to processor. I select four cores of my CPU and put it to 90%. If you have a simpler CPU, select one core on 100%. It will be enough. Go to display, select eight megabytes of video memory, go to storage. In the IDE controller, you have to select the image you downloaded. Choose a disk file. Go to your download folder. And select the image you downloaded. Go to audio. Disable audio. Go to network. The first NAT adapter should be enabled. Go to the second adapter. Enable it and select Bridge Adapter. VirtualBox image is configured. Let's run it. Save the settings and start the server. Install Ubuntu server.
select your favorite language, update to the new installer, select the keyboard layout. I recommend to select English. It is easier to switch from English to another language than to switch from another language to English. As installation base, I select Ubuntu server. I want to configure the IP address by myself. If you don't know how to do it and you don't know what is a subnet mask, better don't touch it. Leave it automatic DHCP. But if you know how to configure a network interface, let's do it together. Follow me. Select your network interface. I already know it is ENP0S8, select it. Edit IP version 4. Again, if you don't know what to do, just leave it automatic DHCP. But I select manual. In subnet mask, I write 192.168.0.0 slash 24. The address is 192.168.0.50. The gateway is 192.168.0.0. 0, 1. Name servers and search domains are empty. Save. Go next. No proxy address. Mirror address without changes. Let's configure the disk. I want to make sure Ubuntu will use all 20 gigabytes I assigned. Select our hard disk. Select the device. Edit. Here you write the maximum value, 20 gigabytes. It will correct itself to 18 gigabytes. Save, go next. Yes, write your name, write the server name, write username. I will write a very secure password. Install OpenSSH server, no additional tools. Let's wait for the installation. It can take about 10 minutes. It is installed. Reboot it. Press Enter. Let's log in. Write your name. Write your password. The login succeeded. Shut down the server and disable the CD-ROM. sudo shut down now enter write your password the server is off go to settings go to storage make sure it is empty go to system disable optical and make the hard disk as the primary save the ubuntu server is installed I want to make some basic configuration and update all packages. First thing, run the server and check the RAM memory. Write your username, write the password, write the command re dash dash human. My total memory is almost 4 gigabytes and it is good. I want to save the command, open VS Code, go to server installation file, write the following. Check RAM. Here write the command we wrote in the terminal. Free human. Save the file. I'm going to check the disk size. It will be the command df dash dash human. Open the server, write the command df dash dash human. We can see in the second row the total size of our disk is 18 gigabyte. We use 6.5 gigabytes and 11 gigabytes are available. You see the server is fresh installed and it already took 6.5 gigabytes. Now let's check the SSH connection. We need to know the IP address of our server. One way to check it is to list all network interfaces. It will be the command IP address. Write the command in our server, IP address, enter. Here we have three network interfaces. First one is our loopback. The second one is NAT interface, 
And the third one, ENP0S8, it is the bridged adapter and we can find the IP address in the third row. It is 192.168.050. I want to try to connect to the server using SSH. First thing, shut down the server. The server is off. Go to VirtualBox and run it headless. The server is running. Open the terminal and write SSH and the IP address. It is 192.168.050. Enter. Write the password. Enter. We are connected to the server. If you have a different username, you can write another command. I will exit from the server and write the command SSH username at server IP. Enter, write the password, and we are logged in. I will save the commands I wrote now in the terminal. Go to VS Code, open utils.md, and write SSH. Open the terminal and copy the commands. Save the file. I connect it via SSH. It is very important you do it too. If you cannot do it, pause the video and configure your server. I want to make some aesthetic changes. I will change the bash color. Open the file bash rc. Scroll down. You have to find the line PS1 equals and these long things. Copy it. Past it. Comment the first line. Let's edit the second line. After the slash U, write some spaces. Copy this part. Past it. Delete the spaces. Now, before the U, find the 32 and make it to be 31. Save it. It is Ctrl O. Exit. Exit the server. Connect to the server again. Write the password. You see, now your name will be in the red color. I want to save the instruction. Go to VS Code. Write. Change. Bash. Color. The first thing we did, we opened the bash rc. I will go to terminal and just copy the path. The second thing, we edited the line. Find the line. It is it. Copy. Passed in VS Code. I will make it smaller. Save the file. Now I want to update all packages. Go to the terminal. Make sure you are connected to the server. And write sudo apt update. Write the password. 24 packages can be upgraded. Let's upgrade them. sudo apt upgrade. Yes. Let's wait. Click OK. Now restart the server. sudo reboot. Wait a while. In the meantime, I will save the commands.
save the file, go to the terminal, connect to the server, write the password, write again sudo apt update, write the password. All packages are up to date. It is all. Shut down the server. Go to VS Code and commit the changes. The utils file is OK. Server installation file is also OK. Add it to the stage. Write the commit message. It is created. Server installation instructions. New line, install Ubuntu. Commit. I'm going to push everything to GitHub. Go to the terminal, exit the server, make sure the path is correct, and write git push. Pushed. Let's check on GitHub. Refresh the page. Here is our commit. Go to the files. We have utils.md. We have server installation. It is all. Now you have a fresh Ubuntu server. Thank you for watching.